Hello everybody and welcome to this analysis video of my game against Grandmaster Pavel Tregubo played in the German Bundesliga round 3 on the weekend 19th and 20th November 2016. So we're playing against Mülheim, my team from Hamburg, and I was facing Pavel Tregubov, Elo 2586 on board 2. And let's get right into it. I start with 1e4. And he replied with the French, which I didn't expect. I prepared like 15 minutes before the game and I'd seen he mostly played the Sicilian, but he wanted to probably surprise me a little bit and went for this line. C5, takes on D5, takes back. Most people do play Queen takes D5 here, but E takes D5 is also a very solid move and he had prepared something very specific. We'll get to that. So Bishop B5, I developed now Queen E7 check which is forcing my bishop to go back because I don't want to trade queens here. So bishop e2. And now the queen is in the way, so it moves immediately again, goes to c7, uh, castle, knight f6. And here I played rook e1. Another option would be to take on c5 now and then play knight b3. And this is the typical position you see here in these lines where black has this isolated pawn on d5 and white does have the better pawn structure, but it is still pretty balanced because black also has some perks on his side, for example, the square e4. So rook e1 played, and I thought, well, if he now plays bishop e7, then I'll take on c5. But here he just took on d4, and he allows me to give a check of my bishop where I want to go, but it's not really a big deal. And unfortunately, this move doesn't work either. Black can just take, and I can give a double check but there is no mate on e8 since black is covering the square so that doesn't work so i went for bishop b5 check i spotted this interesting line and i thought i'll go for it even though looking bad at, back at it in hindsight it doesn't really make sense if you know your opponent is prepared and there's nothing concrete or good for for you here so i went bishop b5 check maybe knight b3 would have been a little bit more solid so knight bishop e5 check, bishop e7, now this was my idea, go queen e2 and stop him from castling because, well, if he castles now, he will lose the piece on e7. But he still knew this position, he played a6, which, which I saw coming, forcing me to take on c6, he has to take with the pawn to keep this bishop protected, and here my plan was, and what I did, knight takes d4, but b4 would have been better here, I, I didn't see his next move after knight takes d4 which was a little problem a b4 would have been better get some control over the dark squares and a possible line could go here like this black actually can sacrifice a pawn but he'll get his piece into play put the bishop on d6 take on b4 good compensation for black and the position is roughly equal so let's see what I did. I took on d4 and now my plan was, well, you still cannot castle because you gotta keep your bishop protected. Cannot play bishop e6 and I right now threatened to take on c6. So I thought that he would be more or less forced to go c5, but he wasn't. If he goes c5, I can still go knight c6 and then get the bishop back, split his bishop pair. And I thought this position might be a little bit more comfortable for me. But that wasn't to happen. He played rook a7, I had missed this move, protecting his rook bishop one more time and stopping me from going knight takes c6. So I had to, well, do something else and I played queen f3 with the idea of having knight f5 as a possibility and he played bishop g4. Probably castle would have been a stronger move, allowing me to go knight f5. And yes, black gives this bishop, but um, my pieces are not yet developed and if I move the knight the problem is his knight is coming to e4 which is a wonderful square here for the black knight and black is a little bit more comfortable here but he went for bishop g4 he told me afterwards he didn't like this knight f5 move so he played bishop g4 and I was happy to see his move because now the queens come off and I thought in the end game I'm not worse queen g3 now he took on g3 note that after c5 I can still go knight c6 when he cannot take because of queen b8 check picking up this rook on a7. So after queen g3, c5, knight c6, he would also need to take on g3, so it doesn't make a difference. But 
he played c5 and I was once again happy to split the bishop pair because I don't like to play against the bishop pair necessarily and we reach a disposition in which I was still optimistic. I thought I, I do have an advantage here because his pawn structure is a little bit worse than mine but in fact position is just equal. But I heard before that's not a bad thing if you overestimate your position a little bit so I don't mind. Play knight b3 so the general idea is here I want to play on the dark squares. He played rook c8 after the game we said maybe black can just go knight d7 with the idea to put the rook on b8 instead of c8 and just protect the pawn c5 king d6. Probably I should go bishop f4 here to stop rook b8 and the position remains equal. So rook c8 played, now c3 to stop any d4 and like I said I want to play on the dark squares here. Knight d7, bishop e3, king d6 and now I spotted this plan that he might go knight b6 and either go to a4 or to c4 and I didn't like that. So I played knight a5 stopping this plan because now if he plays knight b6 I can give this check on b7 and pick up the pawn on c5. So that was a prophylactic move. And I was also curious how he would proceed here, it wasn't clear to me. Well he played f6, good move to stabilize the knight whenever it needs to get to to e5 and also maybe preparing g5, just a good useful move. I played f3, pushing the bishop back so I can put my rook on d1. And this was kind of aimed against rook b8, which he played anyway. Maybe a little bit better here would have been to go h5 and just stop me from going g4 at any point. So rook b8, and here actually I missed a, a good chance. Um, I played bishop f4 check. Well, that's still fine, but I could have gone b4 and I could have also played this after bishop f4 check. And this is a nice move I completely missed. So black pretty much has to take, because I also threatened to take right now on c5. And then I give this intermediate check. Knight e5 is forced, otherwise you lo lose the rook on b8. And now look at this. Beautiful. <laughs> Two pieces are pinned, the, the pawn and the knight. And I, I can give this check. King moves, I take on e5, take back with tempo, hitting the rook, rook b7, take on b4, rook takes b4, and after this whole operation I have emerged a pawn up. And I would have been quite happy here, even though the black position should be defendable, h5, an important move to stop him from going g4. And I will have not an easy time to get these pawns rolling, and yeah, it should be probably a draw, but here I can play without any risks, and I would have liked that. So let's go back here, I played the check first, and even here I could have still gone b4, I think it would transpose, but I missed this this move, I played rook d2. Yeah, and if, so here's the thing, if I go knight c4 immediately, well, he just goes king c6, and if I do the same thing now, it's just a whole different ball game because the rook's coming in here, and I'm not protecting this pawn, and um, this is completely fine for black. So I played knight b no I played rook d2 now threatening knight c4 check he has to stop that obviously only moves king c7 going out of this pin and now I move the knight back knight b3 he played rook b5 and I went rook e2 attacking the knight on e5 so he has to go king d6 and now I play g4 to keep this pin going. And in case if he plays g5, which he did, I can go back to g3. So this position, and here he played a little bit of an inaccuracy. Not too much, but it makes his life harder. He played bishop d7. Well, his life isn't really hard to begin with. The position is just equal. And the easiest way to continue would have been to go rook b8. Just bring the rook back. I can play this move knight d4, but it doesn't really get me that much. Black doesn't take. Then I would be a pawn up after taking e5 in the next move. But just plays bishop d7 and then yes my knight is pretty on d4 but that's about it. I can actually even leave it here and black cannot well move out of this easily. Well maybe you could go king c7. But black can also take and while I can keep this pin as it is I can also not make any progress here and it's just equal. So bishop d7, what was the problem with this move? Well, it allowed me to go for this move, which I quite liked, open up the black pawn structure and opening up the black position in general. And here he did play a mistake, now he went rook b8, he needed to go rook b4, when after c takes c5, he doesn't take back on d5, he goes bishop b5. 
and the pawn is to go bishop c4 and via this route bring the bishop to d5. Now if the knight c1 actually, well you could go bishop takes d5, then you might be still a little bit worse here of the knight d3, mm -hmm. the idea of rook e2. But instead black can just go bishop b5 back, has this idea of going rook d4 as well, and it looks like there's really not much here for white, just equal. After rook b8 though, things are different. Now taking d5, he had the same idea here, bishop b5, but there are some differences, which we'll see in a moment. Rook d2, bishop c4, so we just saw the position with the rook on b4, but here I can go knight a5. That's the key difference. Now, of course, I threatened to take on c4, so he took on a2, and now I play b3. Okay, well, the bishop is threatened, and he took on b3. If he goes bishop b1, I just give a check, and this is terrible. I take an e5 and uh, take back. I have this pawn, and I'm a pawn up already. This is great for white. So he took, now we see the whole difference. With the rook on b8, the rook is unprotected. If the rook was still on b4, then it would be protected and black could just move the bishop, no problem. But now, here's a problem. The bishop cannot move, since then the rook would be hanged. And if you go c4, that doesn't help. I just take on c4. Once again, there's this pin and this pin. And after king takes d5, I just move back. And it's the same deal. The bishop cannot move and you lose this piece. Maybe the best chance, he played king takes d5 here, maybe the best chance would have been to go rook b5, knight takes b3, and king e7. Now c4 doesn't work because, well, the knight is a tricky piece. I can play knight d2, and if rook takes b2, I play knight takes c4 and win back the rook, and I emerge a piece up. So maybe king e7 is the best chance, threatening c4, but now d6 check, black takes, I can always unpin with check, so king d7. Bishop f2, and now, of course, after c4, I have knight c5 check, so black has to go knight d3, now rook b1, c4, and now, well, this is actually cute, I didn't look at this here, white needs to play knight c5, if knight d2, which first looks fine to, to unpin this way, black can go c3, rook takes b5, and c takes d2, and this one is queening, rook b1, knight c1. So I would need to go knight c5 here and we get to this position where I'm an exchange up and have good winning chance, I think. Black has some drawing chance as well, but well, I don't know. <laughs> it would be a game for two results. And the game he took on d5, now I take on b3. And yeah, if he goes c4, or king c4, well, king c4, I even have something better. If c4, just rook d2 unpinning. So he played rook b5 preparing, well, c4 or knight d3, knight d3 is a threat now as well. And um, I need to be ready for this. So I played rook d2, king c4, and knight c1. I was happy to find this variation. It's in fact the only variation in which I keep my advantage. I need to unpin as quickly as possible. And first I was afraid of king c3, but then I spotted a very important move, bishop e1. And if rook b1 now, I give a check first, push the king all the way back, protect my knight on c1, bring the king closer, and I will win sooner or later. So he played rook b1 right away, but now I also give a check. You can see the king is not coming closer to my knight. He goes to the side. And here I was pondering for a long time. Should I give a check and bring my king closer or take the knight? And in the end, I decided to take the knight. Both moves are winning, but this just seemed easier to me. King f2. I bring my king closer to the game and he just pushes his pawns. I mean, there's really not much else he can do. Um, if he goes c3 here, well, that would just allow me to get closer to the pawn and just pick it up the next move. So he played a5, king e4, a4, king takes e5, and now king c5. If he keeps pushing here, either a3 or c3, I just go king e4, pick this one up. And also suddenly all the rook and games, also all the pawn and games are winning whenever I can exchange my knight against this pawn. So he played king c5 to not allow me to get closer, but here I spotted the winning variation, knight d3 check, king b5 and knight b2. And I'm just targeting this pawn, he cannot protect it. So he went c3, 
also note that a3 doesn't help knight takes c4 a2 just give a check here and take the pawn and next move so he went c3 but now i just play knight takes a4 king takes and rook takes c3 and this is what i was talking about the rook end game is just clearly winning for white here being a pawn up and also having the, the king completely cut off from the action from the king side he played rook b2 and i went king f6 just going after these pawns and here he resigned because this is just so simple i take on g5 i can even go for this pawn i can do so many things here just push this pawn my rook will stay on the c file cut the black king off and it's a very simple win for me so i was quite happy to uh win my first game in a long time i hadn't played for over seven months and i hadn't played in a bundesliga for um four years and we managed to win this match clearly six to two against muhan and i was quite happy uh with the final phase of this game where i really didn't make any inaccuracies i looked at the game afterwards and if i may say so i was quite well quite proud to, to play all the perfect moves in the end and convert my advantage that I got starting from C4 um, perfectly. It doesn't happen that often to me. All right, I hope you got something out of it and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.